Shake it to a no deep. How's the food? Did I do good? Man, look, the food's so good. Made me want to slap their mom. Who mom? <laughs> it's me! <laughs> What's up, bullies and baddies? It's your girl, Shini Vici. And it's your boy, Naveen. And we back with a video, and I'm squeezing his butt. You, you are. <laughs> yeah, that happened. Oh, uh, yo, oh, ooh, Lord have mercy. I'm trying we to take it up on one. We got to eat first. Babe, stop. Oops. Hi. Thanks in a row. All yeah. right, y'all, so we are super excited to be back. Yes, we are. I never left, you know what I'm saying? Well, you've been off the channel for like some months. But anywho. Cap. A lot been going on. We hit 500k, y'all. Hey! We're so excited. We appreciate all of y'all. Y'all who comment, y'all who don't come in and still watch, and just you know, OG brownies, new brownies, bullies and baddies. You get what I'm saying? With that said, some things are going to be changing on the channel. We decided to spice up the mukbangs just a little bit, and we're super excited to be launching a new series we call Hypothetically. Hypothetically, of course. Would you want to know instead, hypothetically, of course? Fine. Hypothetically is a series where we tell you guys the craziest stories you've ever heard in your life and then put ourselves in, in the that situation. situation. We got king crabs and we got these um, shrimps and stuff, potato corn, the whole nine, and then we have the love sauce on the side. Y'all know how we like it. We've been gone for a long time and yeah it was so know, much just going on in the world and yes, everything that we, we really wanted to take a break individually you know and as a family and one of my kids is coming <laughs> all right y'all so we back some people probably gonna call us divas for that but you know it we, is what it is divas for taking care of your mental health really a lot of people don't understand how don't care health is. yeah it's true like how you gonna call somebody a diva for taking care of themselves that's crazy We'll get started. I'm going to start deshelling some of this stuff. And I'm going to get into today's hypothetical. Y'all, I'm so excited. All right, cool. So, okay, so there was this guy, right? As a matter of fact, there's this area in Africa where they do, like, oil mining and all kind of stuff. And they had this big oil ship out and a couple of, um, you know, tug ships out to take the oil wherever it needs to go whenever, you know, it needs to go out. So three ships next to the, uh, near the big ship, and they're out in the middle of the ocean. So the way that things work, uh, in their business is that they have to lock those tug ships from the inside and every person on a tug ship has to go in their rooms at night and lock their rooms from the inside because of the past because piracy is actually a real thing still so to protect themselves uh, they're pretty much locked in on the inside at night when a wave crashes in misses two of the other tug ships and flips one over completely 12 crew members including the captain, just go down, he, right? You want to eat a crab real quick? Absolutely, because I'm home. I know, now. you getting into that story, boy. Oof. All right, so we're going to take a moment. Here, baby, let me dip yours up. You you yes, me? yes, Lord. Mm. Y'all, it's been so long. Like, I ain't since had we've been gone, I don't think we had any crabs. We've been just eating plant-based meals. Mm. All right, so here we go. Mm. That's good. Well, you might even sit that bowl right here. It's kind of rosy. Huh? I'm over now. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Alright. Where the neck is that? Oh, right here. Okay. okay. Tug ship goes down. Alright? 12 crew members on board. And middle of the night, stuff just started rolling everywhere. Cool. Well, right before it went down, a man named Harrison Okenne came out of his room to go to the restroom. While he's in the restroom, that's when the ship flips. All the other crew members are in their rooms asleep. And now they're struggling trying to get, you know, their doors unlocked and they end up drowning. Uh, Harrison ends up plying his door open as the water is rushing into the ship and sees two other crew members open a, um, an emergency hatch and get sucked out into the ocean. So now it's pitch black, uh, the lights are all out, and Harrison is in a ship sinking, but alive. Hmm. We gotta figure this thing out how to eat and talk, tell the story. <laughs> but I know he ain't ate nothing in a while, so. Thank you, baby.
Woo, that was good, guys. Dog. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to make potato. Go ahead. Oh, give me one. I'm going to hang to me. Hmm. Let me eat this real quick. I'm coming back. Y'all, at that point, he was just being out at sea. It's already a scary thing. And for anything to happen like that and water start rushing in, do you know? Hold on, don't get me the hot stuff. Uh oh. Okay, y'all don't go nowhere. I gotta check on Halo. I'm gonna finish the store. Alright, y'all, so I'm back. And Halo's fine, by the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Harrison's in the ship, it's going down, and then, uh, you know, it's pitch black on the inside. He musters up enough courage to swim ends up finding uh the another bathroom that is a little bit smaller than the one he was in and there's a tiny air pocket right before he runs out of air and so he's holding on to the sink while it's while it was upside down holding himself up to keep his you know face where the air pocket was and he knew he had to leave there to try and find another if he was going to survive so let me take another bite <laughs> Want some more shrimp, Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'll just sit it in there so mm -hmm. you don't have to dish. Dish out. You could just start eating since you're talking. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, this story is crazy. Like, it's so crazy. Let me get the shrimp real quick. <laughs> but it's okay. Take your time. I'm hungry too. I know. They gonna like she's saying take her time, but she eating up all the food. Y'all eat fast. I'm so sick <laughs> of that comment. She eating up all the food because she don't want nobody else to have none. She didn't eat like she been to prison for real. Well, you have a job and they only give you a ten minute break. And when you go to school and your lunches, by the time you go get your food to come back, your lunch be over, so you got to eat on your way. You just learn. You eat fast and it become a habit. So. No, I was gonna say cause you've been out of school and. A nine five for Run back to yourself. <laughs> a long time. How many habits do you have that you ain't broke yet? From childhood. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Oh, a couple. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> that I know of. <coughs> <clears throat> I ain't got the wrong. Bro, <clears throat> oh we speaking of that, I know we off something. I know stay on key. I mean on <coughs> <you're> not... <coughs> Bruh, me and Naveen had to go get groceries and we was in Costco and how about my crazy butt just started coughing? I was like, oh, they're gonna put me out. I was so embarrassed. But I had a cough, like, I'm not sick or anything. Oh, go ahead, so they don't forget right, the cool. story. Like, All right, here we go, here we go. They ain't gonna be waiting too long. I'm sorry, y'all, here we go. So, Harrison's let, let's go of the sink in the pitch black, swimming through the other crew members, so to speak, fish and all in the ship. Down the hallway and ends up feeling his way to the captain's deck, the captain's room, a bigger room. And right before he runs out of air again, he finds another air pocket. He can't really stand up too much in it and, and he knows that because they're now a hundred, well, he doesn't know how deep they are, but the ships stop. The ship stops. They're a hundred feet. He's a hundred feet down. The water temperature has dropped from 84, which is what it was where, you know, they live at, to 77, which means he could hit hyper hypothermia anywhere, anytime within the next few hours, right? So Harrison goes back into the water through <clears throat> the other crew members. Trying to keep from saying, you know, or whatever. Yeah, he's trying to keep from keeping the story from being insensitive because it's right. actually a true story. It is a true story. As soon as the ship went down, um, the other two ships noticed and they sent a dive, an emergency dive crew after them. They banged on the hull of the ship right after it stopped. Harrison heard them and was banging back, but they couldn't hear him. Man. So they assume everybody's <clears throat> that there are no survivors. more survivors and they go back up. They let everybody know, and then they go send for another emergency dive team that was more prepared because they can only be down there at that depth for 20 minutes um, to come and try to re retrieve, you know, um, 
all of the fallen so their families could have um, you know some closure and that people could pay their respects right well now they assume everybody's gone Harrison has nobody that's actually coming for him he's in the he's in the captain's room he swam back into the water and found tools what? use those tools to scrape panels off of the wall and in the captain's mattress and use those things to create some type of like floating platform that he could sit on to keep his body out of the water and in the air pocket now because of the movement of the fishes in the water um, the water was soaking up the excess carbon dioxide coming from his breath giving him a, a little bit more extended time to live on that on the oxygen that was in that air pocket a hundred feet deep in the pitch black pitch black in the water like deep down the water deep like you, you, you can't see how nothing. do you even feel like there is hope that you are gonna live out okay okay I can't go too far so uh this man is down there surviving on literally a wing and a prayer for two and a half almost three days he's pretty much out of energy god if you let me survive this i'll never go back to sea again everybody do that my cousin every time she get on the roller coaster she's like please i never Lord, do it again i never do it again every time you're in a deep situation boy and so finally the dive team that comes to retrieve all of the fallen um crew members is under is underwater and they're searching through the ship sorry y'all my words are all broken up the ship caused a bunch of silk to raise up into the water where it was super cloudy where you couldn't see but more than a few few feet in front of you so the divers are swimming through looking for these fallen people and Harrison sees the light from one of the uh, divers. divers you know down the hall and he knows that if he doesn't catch them uh, it could be you know his last chance to, to you know potentially survive the mm -hmm. situation so he gets in the water and swims in that direction with the last of his strength and then you know pretty much just before that diver is is going to be unable to you know see him again like it's actually live footage yeah there's live footage when the diver you know is shining his light in Harrison's direction all you can see is this faint hand extending towards the diver like not even much energy no energy is not moving and then when the diver grabs his hand Harrison uses his last of his energy to squeeze the diver's hand. Now imagine being down there to look for corpses and something squeeze you back. I would have freaked out. Man, he was look. so calm. Man, look. I and so that's how he survived. Yeah. Two and a half, almost three days underwater. So we want to make sure y'all that we tell the story first and then give our commentary so we won't re interrupt because me and him we can go back and forth all day. Factual. So, so hypothetically, if that were you, what would you do? I would have been dead. <coughs> D E D. <laughs> but no, for real. Like I don't feel like I would have survived because water is su is such a mystery. You, like you can't predict it. You oh don't my. know how it's gonna do X, Y, and Z. So the fact that you and I've been on cruises before, but it's it's, it's like. At that point, when you see water rushing in, I'm like, Titanic, no. Like, Lord, take me now. Like, I don't want to deal with this. So, I feel like me being me, and I would have panicked. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of times when stuff happens to me, I go into survival mode. But in that, when it comes down to water, I just feel like, honestly, I would have just gave up. It's cold. I ain't got no food, no crab. Honestly, Bruh, like I probably would have tried to cook a crab or two. <laughs> But no, for real, like, <coughs> this man... You burned up your oxygen. Trying to get the, uh... I'm trying to cook. You done burnt your oxygen up. I'm talking about the last meal. Bro, but no. <coughs> you gonna eat fish? Yeah, go ahead. I feel like this man is one of the strongest men in the world because of his mental. Like, surviving like that, knowing nobody's around you, in the dark, with all types of fish... You know, you hit the bottom. You're at the bottom. Like your ship stopped moving? You're Bruh. at the bottom. I'm, I'm through. I'm and, done. Yeah, it's like not being able to see in water. Like, I don't even like being able to see, not see at night. You know what I mean? In the house, we cut no lights to go to the bathroom. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like... Man, you know how I am with water. It's inspiring like. to hear, you know, him being able to survive 
you know and he did his wife did say he's still suffering like he wake up in the middle of the night and he's like you know screaming and stuff like that so he do have ptsd from the situation i said it right right yes um and yeah so like me as a person i already be scared of like he's afraid of water like a pool like a pool situation like i love swimming swimming is one of my favorite activities however if i'm in a pool by myself my mind just runs like way you. too far. Like, I assume if I'm in the water by myself, sharks are in with me. In a pool, y'all. It just is what it is. Like, so imagine me. Y'all picture me. <laughs> <laughs> imagine me in that bathroom. Now I'm sitting on the toilet. Now we flipping. Oh, Lord. Upside down, you can't see nothing. The lights go out. Before the lights go out, I, I see two of my crew members go. Oh man, look, I'm just finna swim in their direction. Like, don't leave me, don't leave me. Yeah, cause I. I don't wanna be alone at that point. Like, how do you stay underwater in the cold for for two days? That man was strong. And not knowing, like, think about it. Like, he didn't know when or if somebody was coming. You know, like. They bang on the hole, you, you bang feel... back, and they don't hear you? Oh my gosh, like this this was one of the craziest stories I've ever heard in my life. Like, you know, going to bed and, and, and using the bathroom just saved your life. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. Talk about providence. Yeah, like it's just it's just wild. So when I when I heard the story, I was like, babe, come here. And he ended up watching the whole video and we ended up like doing more research about him. I just wanted to know, you know, his side of it. Uh and you know how he he's doing and he's I just, a chef now i just couldn't imagine he said he's never going back on the water again mm -hmm. and i don't blame him like sure i'm taking dry showers like the, i don't want to see no water at all i don't want to drink no water i don't want to see no water the people from his village assumed that he did voodoo in order to survive yeah yeah because all the other crew members mm -hmm. like it's no way you could survive underwater for, for three two days. days yeah he had to go into a decompression chamber for the same amount of time yeah, but he was underwater. Yeah, let's say he would have been able to like escape the ship from being under so long when he went up. His, uh, I don't know the correct terminology. Yeah, basically, his body would have needed to decompress from the pressure, the extreme pressure it had mm -hmm. been experiencing. Because mm -hmm. it adjusted to it on his way down, being in right. more of a controlled environment. Right. And so, to come back up. You know, it could cause significant health issues, including, you know, passing away. So, um, even divers that, you know, spend a few hours deep diving or however long they spend have to go into decompression chambers if they go down to. Yeah, deep. And they, yeah, they don't stay down it that long. So, yeah, so yeah. So, if he would have been able to get out of the, 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 the ship, he still would not have survived. Yeah, so guys, in that situation, yeah, I wouldn't have been no good. Um, what? No, I agree. Yeah, yeah I agree. so. Make sure in the comments, put yourself in this situation, hypothetically. What would you do? He took that from me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, hypothetically, what would you do in this situation? Um, I would like to know, like, do you love water? Do you feel like you would have survived? You know, do you feel like you're, you know, I ain't gonna tell y'all all the truth. You know what I mean? Just, just let us know. And cold emoji is something with water. Splash. Absolutely. You know how my eyes be. And make sure to tune in next time because we got an even crazier story for the next one. Yep. So I hope y'all like the way we're going to do these mukbangs now. It makes it more exciting than just eating seafood. Um, me and him can kind of find new stories and have a little more to, you know, talk about. Especially being in quarantine. Ain't nobody going nowhere. You know what I mean? So, yeah, y'all. Say welcome back to Naveen. Thanks, babe, for being my plus one. How's the food? Did I do good? Man, look. The food's so good. Made me want to slap their mama. Who mom? <laughs> it's me! <laughs> <laughs> you come here. You think that's funny? It is. <laughs> Sucker, now you clean up. Oh, what? Come on. Bye. Hold on now. What you think? <laughs>